Oh, there's Robert. I remember seeing him the other night. Okay, I've unmuted everybody that's um, got a mic, but I can. Hi, that's Kathleen. I have mine okay. muted. Okay, okay. you're muted. sounding okay. But and this is Lori Ballad, and I, I have mine Lori unmuted. Ballad. Yeah, there, there, there was a little bit there. There was a little bit there. Probably because mine's on. Oh, here. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, checking for an echo. Okay, checking for an echo. Yeah, still an echo somewhere. Yeah, still echoes. Let me know when we're ready. Clock says Clock seven o'clock, so you can go. It's your it's your meeting. Yeah, it is. I just wanted to make sure we got all the technical stuff out of the way. Okay, if you could please mute, I'm hearing an echo. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the first uh, online welcome. meeting of the Dayton Microcomputer uh, Association. Micro you are now among DMA members, guests, and friends who are about to participate in our March 2020 general meeting. My name is Peter Hess. I'm the DMA's current president. Who would have thought I could conduct a DMA general meeting while not wearing any pants? <laughs> Normally, we have many valuable contributions made from the audience. Some blurted out and some made after their hand is raised and they were recognized by the meeting chair. It is likely that because of technological limitations, your blurted comment may not be heard and also may interfere with an already recognized talker. We ask that valuable comments offered by you be preceded by a raised hand and that you be recognized by the host or co-host before speaking. Crosstalk may work, just barely, on the VIEW TV show, but it will very likely get in the way of our desired sharing of knowledge and other tech information. As tech members and guests already know, I call on people when they raise their hands. Our meetings typically last for two hours, and since we haven't yet been able to facilitate our 50-50 drawing or figure out how to award our monthly door prizes this way, we have plenty of talk time today. The formal portion of today's meeting will conclude around 9 p.m. Eastern. I hear that under extreme situations or circumstances such as what we are experiencing now, it is best for isolated individuals to follow as much of a routine or, if you prefer, ritual as possible. So because of that, tonight the DMA will be following our previously established agenda fairly closely. We are also going to take advantage of the technology which we are able to use and which we are using right now. Again, the one major change in our meeting process is that I will be asking that participants raise their hands if they wish to contribute to the meeting. Now, this is uh, background information. Many of you have already heard this, but um, for our visitors, the DMA is a computer user group which is over 43 years old. It is a 501c3 nonprofit organization which has met every month for in-person general meetings with the only possible exception being the occasional weather cancellation. Like most long-lived computer user groups, the DMA is comprised of mostly semi-retired and retired individuals. But we are very willing to participate and share information with the next generation and the following generations. Membership for active students under 22 is free. Other DMA member benefits can be seen on our website, which is www.dma1.org. That's dma1.org. <clears throat> Many DMA members are both early adopters and influencers. We are a body of different individuals who approach technology with a user helping user approach. Many of us are self-educated in technology, but even so, we are valuable resources for many of our technologically challenged friends. Now, Luddites are a lost cause regarding technology. They're like educating politicians whose votes were bought. 
so we don't bother with either of them. Although we would be open to helping either if they would like to learn the facts about technology. So we'd like to have uh, all of our meeting guests become members. Anyone wishing to attend our meetings are welcome to do so. As a, as a meeting attendee, please feel free to contribute any technical solutions during our brain trust period later in this evening, as well as raise your hand and during uh, our presentation. Our annual membership fees are only $25. If you choose not to be a member, but still like what the DMA is doing, we will be very happy to accept your tax deductible donation so we can continue in this quest. You can donate to the DMA through PayPal, Facebook, or by mailing the DMA a check. Like our tip typical general meetings, this is going to be a mostly a product demonstration and training session. Comparing our in-person and online meetings, the biggest differences are that you are at home and you don't have the opportunity to spill your drink this month on a stranger's notepad in the Huber Heights DJ Chumps meeting room. I look forward to when we can do that again. TJ Chumps does sell alcohol, so our next in-person meeting would likely be raucous. Remember the days when um, after Computer Fest, the core volunteer leadership would go to Elsa's after Computer Fest had ended, and throughout the evening we emptied numerous pitchers of bad wands. Many of us later paid homage to the porcelain god. In the meantime, if you have any problems with Zoom anytime during this meeting, please feel free to ask questions or you can use the form in the Contact Us page, which can easily uh, find in the, what you can easily find on the wonderful website that Mark Campton has designed for us. Again, our webpage address is www.dma1.org. Incidentally, Mark is willing to work with any volunteers who wish to help him keep the website up to date. This meeting is being recorded, and after Mark edits it, it will be posted to our website and also to our new YouTube channel, so our meeting overflow crowds and also those who couldn't participate at this time can still learn. A link to the YouTube channel, to the new YouTube channel, is on at the bottom of our website. Now, I, this is the period of time when we have uh, tech news, and I don't have any tech news right now. Does anybody have any tech news they'd like to contribute? Any, uh, anything not related to uh, the virus? I don't see any hands. <clears throat> okay. We'll go back to what I was, uh, what I was looking at. Um, now, the DMA calendar. Um, SIG leaders. Uh, we have a uh, Zoom account now. And with the Zoom account, we, um, um, well, we, uh, we have our own Zoom account. So we have a capacity of 100, just like we do tonight. We're borrowing APCUG's Zoom uh, subscription, if that's the correct term. Anyway, um, um, and we have a password for that Zoom account. And uh, we just share that password with the SIG leaders and, um, uh, other leadership of DMA, and then we'll be able to have meetings. My only request is that we try not to schedule anything on the same night. Um, probably Gladdy would be the best person to filter all that information through uh, our uh, request for meetings and use of Zoom um, because uh, Gladdy um, has control of the calendar. So it would be my guess that it would be best if Gladdy works on that. Now, um, now, let me get back to what I was looking at here. Um, SIG leaders, uh, Gary Turner. Uh, do you have anything to say about Linux? We will, uh, will there be a Linux meeting this month? I will have a, a Linux Zoom meeting. So um, I think it'll be our first attempt to do a Zoom meeting. And I also have another small group, I think I mailed you about yes. having a uh, lunch meeting. So uh, that's a, not quite an official, DMA SIG, but it's a, it's a lunch meeting that several DMA members attend. That's fine. That's fine. I, um, uh, we'll, uh, I'm sure, get that to you. We don't have uh, any lunch meetings that I know of, any DMA lunch meetings, official DMA lunch meetings, so uh, I don't think there'd be a conflict there. Yeah. 
And let's see, who else do we have that's, uh, uh, Martin, you're up next. Can you click on the, oh, let me, let me get you a microphone there going, Martin. Down at the bottom right of your corner. Okay. Um, you know, that'd be nice if all if all this list were in alphabetical order. Is there any way to do that? Well, the problem is people are using nicknames on top of that. So Martin yeah. is his son and name on the screen is Byzantine. So I see that now. Yeah. Okay. Here we are. I'm on me. I'm unmuting you, Martin. How we doing? Martin, can you hear us? I can see I can see your lips move, but I can't hear you. Right. And you're not Speak muted. Up. Speak up, Martin. Can't hear you. All right. Uh, while Martin's working on that, any I don't think we have any other uh, SIG leaders present. Go, oh, Gary. There he is. I see his hand. Gary, all right. Um, let's uh, let's get you in the in the mix here. Okay, there you are. we can okay. hear you now, hey. Gary. What one, one a timeout, real quick, Peter. The the faster way is just to go to his picture, and when you move your mouse there, it, you have an unmute button right there, and you don't uh, have to look through that list. I don't have to look through the participants. Well, thank you, thank you. I've, I think you had mentioned that before, and I forgot about it. There's just so much to learn about this product. Gary Ganger, you're up. Okay. Uh, one of the problems we've had here at the house, I guess, as everyone knew, my wife has been in the rehab and hospital and everything like that, and she's back home now. But uh, it's getting to the point where we're not going to be able to have meetings here at the house, uh, both by the uh, virus situation and uh, her not being able to get around as well as she used to. So uh, until further notice, we're going to try to keep it by phone only if somebody wants the information. But that's been the way it has been working for a couple of years now since I lost my uh, use of our church. But uh, I'm glad to answer any questions. I get calls all the time from out of state even. So that's about it. Well, Gary, I, um, I want you to know that uh, you're welcome to um, uh, use Zoom. Uh, and um, I don't think we have anything conflicting um, um, with uh, with your meeting time. So um, or um, so nobody else would, should be requesting uh, the use of Zoom. I don't think at that time. If you want to use Zoom, uh, we can get you the password. Yeah, it it it'd probably be neat to use, but like I say, I, I'm not able to really know when. She might have to go to uh, get medicine or or stuff like that. It's it's thrown us completely out of whack. Well, I hope she I hope she gets better soon. Yeah, she does too. Yeah, I believe that. Um, Martin, had they, were you able to uh, get in? Uh, didn't look like it. Well, it, 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 done... it shows that he's unmuted so it's it's like if he has a way of that he's turned off his I'm microphone here. oh here. good all right your turn about what well, that's mark right yeah uh martin can you can you hear us oh martin not oh mark. you know one solution are martin are you on a nod if you if it's correct are you on a windows machine I I can't uh, or a Chrome machine. Which is it? A Mar uh, Windows or a Chrome machine? Chrome, like that. Chrome. Okay. All right. So um, I don't know how to do an adjusted Chrome machine. Uh, Gary Turner, can uh, is there an adjustment that you can think of that he might need to work with because he's got his headphones on now. Um, I can. If it were Windows, I can. Um, 
I, I just it was, what I, what I used Scrum that. was also simple, so I don't know. I mean, his machine is probably better than mine. I, I got one of those uh, seventy-five dollar Chrome book. Well, try it, try it without try it try it without the headphones, Martin, and see if it's if you're having issues with the headphones. Unplug it from the computer. To Bluetooth. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it might be. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Martin, we, maybe we can figure this out a little bit later, but for the time being, uh, let me say that Martin has uh, finished uh, this month's um, uh, newsletter. And um, it, uh, uh, the picture, uh, the uh, cover picture is interesting. Oh. <laughs> and uh, be, be careful when you go to print it though. Uh, he, uh, it, it looks nice when you bleed the image off of the page, but some printers can't handle that well, okay? So um, you may just want to download uh, the, uh, the newsletter to your computer and just look at it that way instead of printing it out. Uh, or, of course, you could look at it on the, on the website, too. So uh, then there goes Martin. He'll probably have something to contribute later. His is the, um, uh, in addition to uh, being the editor of our newsletter, Martin is the um, um, SIG leader for the investment SIG. And I have a feeling that he may uh, may need the um, password later for Zoom to uh, conduct his meetings. Um, we are open to uh, creating new SIGs, by the way. And the new SIGs um, can have, um, uh, we just ask that, uh, they, that a proposal is submitted to the DMA board, the DMA board approves it, that the SIG leader be a member of DMA, and um, that, uh, that, it, that the meetings not be scheduled on the same day that we have anything else for the reason, for the Zoom reason. Um, now, in some time in the future, we may have um, um, hybrid meetings, what I call hybrid meetings, where uh, we also, we have Zoom and also in person, hopefully very soon, but frankly, I doubt if it's going to be in April. Very seriously doubt that we're going to have an in-person meeting in April. Uh, that's yet to be determined, and uh, you can find out through uh, the meetup page or the um, front page, uh, the home page of the uh, DMA website. Um, anybody else like to make any comments about SIGs? Uh, any SIG information that anybody would like to contribute? Martin, how you doing? Can't hear you. Oh, you wired up now? Well, he can hear us. Yeah, but obviously it's, he can hear spe us. it's the speaker part. I don't yeah. know what he's using for a speaker. Uh, well, what he's using for a microphone. He's got his head microphone. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Well, we're on two pages now, which is good. I like that. We got some people. All right. Uh, well, let me let me get back to what I was doing. We might have a short meeting tonight, but. Um, Surprisingly, we have more general meeting topics available for the next month than what we normally have at this time. Uh, both our DMA website and the DMA meetup pages will have more information about our upcoming meeting schedules and topics. The DMA now has its own Zoom subscription. I've mentioned that. And um, so um, we, uh, if, even after uh, all this is over, we could still have Zoom meetings. Um, by the way, um, we found out because of uh, our tax cost in this area, um, uh, a month's worth of Zoom is for us in, now, including tax, and we shouldn't have to pay tax, but including tax is $6.11. Um, mm. We should not have to pay tax, so, the, uh, so it should have been $14.99. Um, next, Brain Trust. Now, now we can uh, work on Martin's issue. Anybody have any suggestions on the Chromebook? We're in the brain trust section of the meeting right now. I don't see any hands. Well, my question would be is, is where is the mic? Is it in the Chromebook? He's, he's nodding, yes, in the Chromebook. Okay, so, so, that, so that means then that uh, he needs to go down to the Zoom uh, 
window or the taskbar and look at where he has the camera and the little carrot to pop up to make sure that the internal camera or internal microphone, there's a carrot in between the mic and the camera, pop up the one in between, and then it lists what your mics and he headphones are. And then he would need to make sure that the computer, the Chromebooks. Okay, can there. you hear me now? Yay! Thank God. We okay. got Martin. I accidentally turned off the internal mic. Well, the only thing I've got to say is Peter was right. Uh, the, the cover of the uh, data bus uh, is, uh, is spectacular. If you have a good printer, a high quality color printer, uh, usually inkjet, and one that's capable of what they call bleed printing, which is printing without margin. If you print the rear cover and the back cover together, I'm the rear cover and the front cover together and put them together. You get a very nice picture, but I suggest you do it all online and save your ink. Uh, just uh, look at all, look at uh, all, it, uh, all of it online. And uh, the picture is called the triumph of death. And it was by what we would call today a Belgian painter, Peter Bruegel, I think the elder. And it's called the triumph of death. And it was painted at the time. The bubonic plague was devastating Europe. So um, uh, take a look, and I inserted a caption. Uh, one of the victims is saying, oh, I, uh, I thought it was a computer virus they were warning us about. But we've got a, a couple of, uh, we've got one interesting article um, from um, another uh, APCUG member, uh, Mr. Maybach, about club meetings uh, using um, uh, various, uh, you know, Zoom, Skype, uh, various other methods. Zoom has some competitors. <laughs> so I'll, I'll hold, I'm, and I'm not coughing because of, uh, because of coronavirus. It's just uh, sort of, well, I don't know, it may be. But in any case, don't worry. You're not going to get, uh, catch it through uh, virtually. Well, Martin, a, um, um, I don't know if, uh, I worked at a print shop, and so the way they used to work with bleed before, was they would yeah. print the picture on a bigger piece of paper and then cut the edge off. Okay. That's the way, that's the way bleed's done uh, with uh, printers that, uh, that you can't, um, you know, that, uh, that don't like bleed. Uh, okay. if, uh, in some cases, if they used uh, inkjet with a bleed image, um, it could creep into the middle of the page or, or the below the page. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it's it's an interesting picture, very interesting. And of course, uh, um, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Martin was a um, is it medieval history professor? Yeah, yeah, medieval Wright history State. at Wright State University. <laughs> so, uh, Martin, do you have anything to say about the investment sig? Uh, no, no, we're keeping. Uh, uh, I'm keeping in touch, in particular, with one member, Alan Schrock, but uh, we obviously can't have a meeting uh, given the current circumstances. Well, you're welcome to, uh, to use the, um, the, the, the new Zoom account that uh, DMA has. Okay. Now we're okay. paying it month to month. So uh, <laughs> if we choose not to use Zoom after, you know, we can all get together in person uh, and it all depends on the, the DMA members and um, uh, what they think. Um, um, and I'm, I'm assuming that those people who don't like to make the trip or don't like to drive after dark might um, be the ones voting in favor of keeping uh, or having a hybrid hybrid meeting. So, yeah. but you're welcome to use that for your investment sig, and of course, then you could use it from home too. Yeah, yeah. By the way, there is one interesting <coughs> thing in the article um, about holding club meetings. Um, the author of that article uh, does say it is not a good idea to have a virtual meeting if there is going to be a severe conflict of one sort or another. In cases like that, it's best to have the meeting in person. Uh, I don't know what his reasons for that are, but um, I, did, uh, I did put in that sentence in the article, and that's from the original article. I put it in italics, but he said that is one caution that he would have about virtual meetings. I don't see any uh, tremendous uh, personal conflicts arising in this meeting. 
Well, no, I don't think so. The uh, John's going to probably be talking about uh, some of the options we have available to us, um, particularly later in the host area, um, um, uh, for solutions regarding solutions for if there is a conflict on a Zoom meeting. Uh, but I would say, you know, that speaker might have uh, said that he prefers to have in-person meetings if there's going to be a conflict. Maybe he likes to wrestle people out of the meeting. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, Sometimes it makes you feel good to beat the shit out of somebody. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, uh, we're going, we're moving on here. So now, um, and John, you're on deck. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to introduce you here. Our presenter tonight is John Kennedy. John got his start with computers with an Atari 400 computer in 1980. Uh, he moved up through the Atari line and then into mainstream PCs running various versions of Windows. In the early 2000s, he became acquainted with the uh, Linux operating system and beginning in 2008 uh, has been mainly running Linux as his preferred operating system. Uh, John is a member of the East Central Ohio Technology Users Group in Newark, Ohio, and he's a, also a regional advisor with the Association of Personal Computer User Groups, or APCUG. Working with computer groups in the Great Lakes, Ohio, uh, let's see, Great Lakes, Ohio River Valley, and Upper Midwest Regions, he is also one of APCUG's Zoom hosts and moderators for their quarterly virtual technology conferences, uh, VTCs. He comes to us tonight as a member of the APCUG Speakers Bureau. And let me add before uh, I hand it over to John, um, uh, Gary Turner, um, you know, John might be a possibility for a presentation at one of your Linux uh, SIG meetings. Um, He's obviously had experience. He's used uh, Linux machines with Zoom and uh, just a thought. Uh, John, you're on. Thank you. When, when Peter asked for a little bio, I've decided I might as well go ahead and do the uh, uh, advertising for APCUG because that's why you're on Zoom tonight or why you even know about Zoom maybe. Uh, we came up with the idea that we don't want groups to fade away. Um, I'm going to really be pushing with the other groups in our region because I've just gotten a couple more emails from uh, groups in both the, my western part, which is region six, and you guys are with me in region three, that uh, you know they're canceling their meeting and canceling their meeting. And uh, we're afraid that you cancel a few months worth of meetings and people are just going to kind of forget about coming and we'll lose our groups. So we're really pushing the Zoom, and uh, we'll talk more about Zoom. Uh, Peter's got it kind of broken up into a couple uh, uh, sections. Uh, what I want to, yeah, there's the, there's the echo. Let me see if that was, could have, could have been uh, Mr. Byzantine. What I want to do in this first round before Peter takes it back over to do whatever he's got on the agenda in between me is that for those who haven't really had a chance to uh, use Zoom, I want to make you aware of a couple of key important uh, parts. If you move your mouse up to the top right hand corner of your Zoom window, uh, you should see two icons. One says speaker view and one is the traditional little square. And that little square is your uh, full screen, like an F11 on your computer. So if you don't want to see your taskbar and stuff like that for your regular computer, you can hit the zoom and escape to get out of it. The other button either says speaker view or uh, forget which oh gallery oh, view yeah, yeah I had to do it now the buttons the opposite if it says speakers view view you are in gallery so I don't know why they do that the difference is that some people like to see everybody and so we all look like we're on Hollywood squares if you're in gallery 
if you click on speaker, everybody goes to a film strip mode at the top of your screen and whoever's doing the talking should be one large picture. And I kind of sometimes don't like those big, large pictures looming up. And as a host, I rather be watching everything that's going on in the, uh, in the, in, in the meeting. Uh, so you have those two choices. At the top left, for your security, you will know that the meeting is being recorded because there's a little button. And so you know that whatever you say can and will be held against you in a future meeting. Hmm. If you move down hmm. to the bottom, the task bars automatically pop away. We've already used a little bit. You've got the two main uh, icons for turning on and off or muting your speaker and turning on and off your video. But the little carrots in between will pop up and like we just did, um, to find out which speaker you have, uh, that's where you will go and, and make sure. Now on, on my desktop, I always have the problem because uh, the desktop has a clip-on camera and the camera has a speaker and my headset has a speaker. So there's always two choices. And when it comes to you know speakers, I've got speakers plugged into the camera or to the uh, desktop and I've got headsets so there's always at least two of those choices and as we found out uh, that Windows sometimes doesn't play right or some games don't release and so sometimes even though you think you're using what you want it doesn't so also on that screen you have where you can test your microphone usually you can do that before you get into a meeting make sure that you can hear yourself and make sure that uh, 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 the volume's okay. We did find out that sometimes uh, there's an option to automatic control your uh, microphone. Uh, you might wanna turn that off so that you can control if you're too loud, too soft, or for your speakers. So those two buttons are important down there. That's where most people have the trouble. Uh, they can't see and they can't speaker here. So that's when you help each other with go down there and, and, and check. If you go to the middle of it, you will see that there's a participant that tells you uh, who all is participating. We know right now there are 26 people online with us. And there's um, a share screen. We'll talk about another one. But I want to point out the chat box. When you click on that, if you would please click on that, uh, down at the bottom of the screen is the box where you type your message. Right now, it's probably sent or set to type a message to everyone. And if I type that, I've just sent out a message. And so you should see that chat icon blinking to let you know that there is a message and that went out to everybody. And when you go to your message box, you can see the messages are written. If you drop that little carrot where it says everyone, you can see that you can send a private message uh, to a particular person. There's also a new thing to me that was in one of the updates down at the very end of that taskbar for Zoom is a reaction and if you click on that you get a clapping and a uh, you know a thumbs up uh, there's also a way that you can raise your hand if you have a question or uh, would like to talk uh, peter has said that for the people who are visually recognized raising a physical hand you can see that, but those that do not have cameras on, you might need to hit that, raise your hand so that somebody knows you have a question or use the chat box and send a message to your host or co-host to say, I've got a question about something or other. John? Yes. Uh, at the, when I click on the reactions button to the right of the pause, stop recording. Yes. I don't get a raised hand. The only two graphics I see are clapping and thumbs up. Correct. So that is in a, another spot. 
it I can't remember if in the windows it's up at the top if you go clear up to the top um, of your screen but The thumbs up and, and the hand up is under the reactions at the bottom of the toolbar. Well, no, oh, I see a thumbs up and a, and a clap hands. Right, you're not allowed to raise your hand. Oh, I'm not allowed to. No, no neither am I. Because I'm a co-host. Right. Okay. All so right. that's, that's where, where we don't see it. Everybody else does. Hmm. So, so uh, everybody else sees three icons. Yes. Okay. Yeah, see, there's, there's advantages to being a co-host and disadvantages. So those are the main things I want to cover right now in this first part of the meeting. So that way, if you are wanting to change the view and either see uh, the whole uh, Hollywood Squares version or just the speaker, you know how to change that. You can make sure you've got your microphone set. Uh, Lori has her hand up. So uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say and see, Lori doesn't have, there we go. Lori, yeah, can you I, ask your I, question? Good. Well, I might have misunderstood, but I thought you just said you can only raise your hand if you're the speaker. And obviously that's not, I mean, if you're the uh, host, and obviously that's not the case. No, the, ho the host and co-host cannot, do not have the button. So okay. because- Okay, I, I understand yeah. now. Thank you. They're, sure, they're in charge, so they don't need to uh, raise their hand. Um, so if you have any questions or, or uh, you, you need to comment, you can now use the chat box or uh, if Peter asks a question, give him a thumbs up or maybe find a thumbs down. Um, if you go to the participation button, the participants, you have the ability up there at the bottom of the list uh, to answer questions such as yes, no, and uh, in case he was asking, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to do such and such? Everybody can do a quick, just answer yes and no, and he gets a tally and you can do a real poll real quick that way. So I think, I think that's uh, all that you wanted right now at this part, and then we move on to your next item in the agenda. Oh, okay. Um, that's, at least that's well, what you said. Yeah, that's fine. Let me ask you about this. The invite button at the bottom, is that for hosts? That's, yeah, for later discussion. Okay. Uh, manage participants. That's next discussion. Okay. I just want to make sure that we've covered all the things on yep. this. It'll, it'll come later. Like we have. Okay. Well, let me get back to, um, to my work here. All right. Um, now, this is uh, we're entering into the ex ethics portion, ethics discussion of, uh, of the evening. Uh, when I first learned how to email and text, no one told me that using all caps is offensive to some people. I just thought all caps were easier to read. To avoid similar embarrassment, we are asking for your suggestions of what you would like not to see or not hear during an online meeting. I'll start this session with my ethics considerations. Uh, number one is be kind. And number two, please leave your microphone off unless you would like to talk. If there are any ambient sounds in your room, they will likely be irritating to other meeting participants. Um, and I'm writing these down. If anybody would like to uh, make any comments about um, uh, any, anything ethical that you would like to have um, considered uh, during uh, online uh, meetings. I don't see any hands. Ah, there it is. Dave. Um, let me find you here. Dave, there we are. Yeah, good evening. Go right ahead, Dave. One thing that I've noticed uh, with using uh, online meetings for several years now for work um, is that uh, everybody can see you. So we... Uh, should be dressed appropriately. And uh, I know this is not a business forum, but uh, uh, generally that means in any business attire that you normally would be at uh, in such a meeting. So, um, and, and all the other little hand gestures and, and the like can be seen. So um, just, just keep that in mind. 
picking your nose can be seen too. Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, any, uh, anybody else would like to make any comments, any suggestions, input? Uh, Ed, Ed Davidson. Yeah, I, I just want everybody to know you you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to put I want to put Christina on the spot and make her make uh, tell her uh, uh, comment publicly. All right. Oh, my sister. Oh, she says I'm here. Hi. No, no, she has a better one. Yeah, oh, I saw this today. Uh, forgetting to mute yourself is like the new reply all with emails. Okay. Every, everybody will be hearing what you're talking about. Especially if you fall asleep. Yeah, really. Well, the good news is, is that uh, we can mute you. So, uh, and um, uh, John will be talking more about that uh, a little bit later. Um, Gary Turner, you um, did you have some comments? You don't have to wear pants, right? Well, that's right. You don't. You know, you don't have to wear pants unless you uh, plan on standing up and, um, well, yeah. um, you know, uh, with the the camera pointed in the wrong direction. You know, so um, uh, you just wear. A, I actually, when I worked at a TV station, these you know the, the um, uh, on air uh, talent or no talent, whichever, would, um, uh, uh, they'd be wearing shorts, and then on sure. top of the shorts, they'd be wearing a, a sport coat and a tie, and, you know, sure. yep. so, um, anyway, mostly the no talent did that. Um, uh, Gladdy, you have some comments. Did you have anything else, uh, Gary? No, no. Okay, Gladdy, you had um, your hands up. Exactly, ethics, but like our live meetings, we should probably avoid politics. Uh, yeah, probably, probably, uh, In, it, including the president. And I haven't talked about him, you know, the, I know, uh, I know. Mango Marauder lately, have I? Uh, so, <laughs> okay, thank you. And I won't say any more about him. Uh, you know, anyway, okay. uh, anybody else have any comments? Okay. Let me, this would go a lot easier if there were a second person doing this um okay so that's guess, that's that's why you have a co-host exactly, exactly. <laughs> thank you very much and and that's mark telling tell him to stop playing with his picture yeah really he was the first one sign up so he's at the top left of my screen so okay um now quick review of uh, any of the zoom products this would be a good time for anybody to ask any questions what's this button do what's that button do uh, John, you're up again. Oh, sounds good. Uh, this this Zoom program is just amazing, and I encourage everyone to have a Zoom because it's free, and so there's no reason why everybody can't do it. I had a club member last week or two weeks ago when we started getting the the uh, stay at home stuff say. Do you know a good way that our 11 family members spread around can keep in touch? And I immediately wrote back and said, yes, get yourself a Zoom account. Only one person has to have the account. And if you have a free account, you can have a conversation, both audio, visual, with one person for an almost indefinite, I think it's supposedly 23 hours and 59 minutes. Uh, or if you are giving a group together, the free account has a 40 minute uh, limit. Uh, and they, they are strict about that. You'll get a uh, warning that you're about time out. But the easiest thing that we even tell our groups that don't wanna pay for uh, a Zoom Pro account like you're getting is that you schedule two meetings, uh, a 40 minute meeting and then after like a three or four minute break, start a second one and you can go another 40 minutes and there's your 80 minutes. A lot of groups go an hour and a half club meeting and uh, then you can have you know two meetings or two, one meeting with two parts and everybody goes to the bathroom at the same time. So uh, 
it, it's terrific. The other big feature that uh, that the Zoom has is that it's cross-platform and works on just about everything. Uh, we have people who uh, join on the Windows side, the Mac side, and of course the Linux side. They do it on their iPhone, they do it on their tablets, they do it on the Chromebook now. Uh, you can't beat that, that I don't think there's almost any device. And if there is one that doesn't work, they're working on it right now to try and uh, make that work. Uh, so that in itself, you know, doesn't cause uh, any kind of limitations. Uh, if you have people that don't want to be seen, uh, you can turn off your uh, video and just talk among yourselves, uh, or you can do both. The other big feature that uh, we haven't done yet, except for a minute earlier, is that Zoom allows you to share a computer screen with everybody else. And so in a presentation like tonight, we could have shared a screen and just like a big screen up at your meetings, if you've had somebody come in and uh, do a presentation, you do it right online. Uh, you can, anything that you would be showing on a computer, showing on your big screen at the meeting can be done over Zoom. Videos can be done, regular presentations can be done. Uh, there's a little trick to make sure that if you are gonna play something on your computer, or uh, view something that's gonna have a, audio track with it, you've got to make sure that you allow Zoom to have access to your sound other than the microphone. And uh, because that's what by default you get. So if I was going to show you uh, a presentation and click on a video, you wouldn't hear it unless we check that. Um, so you get to be able to share and anybody can share uh, in a situation like we if if you're allowed there's a way to say only one person can do it or we can say others uh, it's a great way to be able to share things uh, jt we just did this with our linux group last week and it worked out pretty nice because usually we come together to our our club room where we have our meetings and we've got a computer lab and when we sit there we are um, able to work on a computer that has the same settings as everybody else. But a lot of times the problem you have is with your particular computer. So when we were sitting there and uh, doing Zoom, you had access to our stuff right there. So right now you can see that Peter is able to share his <coughs> screen and you know do a presentation so you can see the agenda. And uh, then he can change that and stop sharing so we can see each other again. Now, while we're up here, uh, you probably saw a strip, a film strip of uh, participants and it might have gotten in your way. There is a way that just like on a Windows machine or a, a, on a window, not a Windows machine, a window, you have your maximize, minimize button. There were buttons there that lets you shrink that film strip down to just a little bar and then you can move that bar out of the way so that it's not interfering with your presentation. Another fa uh, fantastic uh, feature with Zoom is what Peter is doing right now recording. And for a family this would be great because you'd be able to uh, get together as a group and share stories and record it and then afterwards, everybody could get a copy of the recording. Uh, in your case, this is the thing that we do with APCUG. We record our video uh, VTC conferences, and then we upload them to uh, the APCUG website so that anybody can view them. Because if you do come to our VTCs, we have a total of six different presentations on three different hours. So you can only watch one of the two. And so you pick the one you want to watch first, then you can go watch the other one on your YouTube. And so Peter has, has uh, we talked about that, that uh, these meetings will be posted uh, on your ch YouTube channel. And so somebody who misses the meeting. Uh, the other big feature I think of a Zoom meeting is that when we get into our normal Ohio winter weathers, that uh, you can switch from an in-house meeting 
and at the last minute say, oh, we've got a storm coming up. The roads are going to be terrible. Tonight's meeting is going to be a Zoom. So everybody switches to Zoom. You have your meeting, and nobody had to go out in the bad weather. Uh, I, another feature that I haven't figured out how to tell groups that we would um, use it uh, is used by classrooms. If we turn it on, we can subdivide the people you see here into two breakout rooms. And it's sort of like having two sub zooms and one group can be talking among themselves and planning or whatever. And the other group can be doing that. Hosts can get jump back and forth and then you bring them all back together again. So there's, there's that feature of, of zoom. <coughs> Martin had a hand up. So Martin. Yeah. Well, since you were talking about cross platform, uh, I'm, doing this on a participating via a Chromebook, the um, a raise hand button does not show up. What you have to do is click on the participants uh, icon uh, on the bottom of my screen, at least the bottom center. And then a sub window shows up giving all the participants, you can scroll down through them. And uh, then there is at the very bottom of the list of participants, a raise hand button. And when you click on that raise button, raise hand button, then it changes to lower hand. So you can, um, you can uh, lower your hand if, let's say you answered my question in advance. So that may be something that's a little different on a Chromebook or the Android operating system in general uh, than it would be on Windows. There is no, uh, you have to find the raise hand button within a sub um, a sub menu. You have to click on the participants icon. Thank you, Martin. And a as the Chromebook is the newest one that's being developed, uh, for some reason they've done that, and so <laughs> we'll need to add that to. We have usually we have a, a have a uh, a handout that tells how to do different things. So we'll need to make sure that the Chrome uh, change or the way to do it in Chrome is, is, is shown. Um, I think that's, in, except for the hosting part, open for questions. If you have any questions about uh, features of Zoom, the uh, paid version, like uh, Peter told you, is normally $14.99 a month. So I, being a former first grade teacher, I round out. Uh, you know, 15 a month, uh, it does, uh, uh, you get like two free months if you pay for it a year at a time. Uh, you do have the ability, if you feel that the 100 seats is restricting, they have a second level for $50 a month on top of what you're paying, you can add another 400 seats. Um, and that's an option. In the webinar that we have purchased as an add-on to APCUG, the difference with the webinar is that uh, there is no really interaction. It's more like a, 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 a college class that it's a presentation you just attend. Uh, you don't get the camera. The, the uh, person who is the presenter can have a camera, but all the participants just hear. And the only way that they can communicate is through the chat box, or there's another option that I don't like called the Q&A, and uh, do it that way. But we do it that way because we don't want a lot of interruptions during a presentation because we got a time limit. Um, so you have that as a as an add-on feature. But this one, uh, you know, the, the uh, you have the option of, of video and that. Any other questions you might have about? Um, features or uh, extras? Um, would it be helpful for, uh, are you on the Windows machine or not right now? Me, unfortunately, yes. Okay, you are on a Windows machine? Yeah. But it, uh, um, one of the things that I've noticed that uh, people have had problems with, including myself, were um, the uh, settings for video within the computer. So uh, let me go to that. Um, share screen. Where do I get to? Oh, there it is down at the bottom. Okay. All right. And uh, now you're muted. Thank you. Click to click too high. 
So I'm going into settings, window, the window icon settings, going into the settings window, going to system. Can you see my screen? Nope, you're not sharing. Oh, thanks. Let me get there. Okay. Um, so right now too, if, if you have that strip of uh, participants on the right hand side, you go up to the top and the bar will show you can click the flat line and then they'll all disappear. Okay, so we're sharing now. Can you see me? Correct. Okay, uh, click on the system icon. Go to sound in this, uh, in the case that the, the problem that I had was sound. And we have uh, under, um, uh, first the recorder wouldn't work and then the microphone never did work. Okay, so I went into device properties and this was a enabled me to um, to set the sound. There was another play manage sound devices. Now, when I had it plugged in uh, the uh, the wires for uh, you know like when you use for a phone, uh, it had two listings. It had uh, speakers and then it had microphones, uh, two items. Well, uh, now I don't have it plugged in because it wasn't doing me any good. So uh, so I unplugged it. But that's where you would find the settings, and, and then you have the option of clicking on disable or enable inside each of these boxes. I think that's an important, important thing to uh, be aware of anyway. And stopping share. Uh, anybody else have any, uh, let's see, Ed, you had a question. You had a hand up. Uh, can you hear me? Exactly. Yeah, now. Uh, I okay. Um, I uh, I was wondering. He he mentioned that um, you can have like uh, a free version. You can have like two people talking. Well, I know to get on this thing here, I had to put a uh, number in. You know, like a big long number for the which which group it is. How would you do it if you're only talking to one other person? You do the same thing. It's it's a you got to remember that there is a gazillion, as Judy Tulu would say, uh, different Zooms going on at the same time. So every Zoom has its own special nine digit number. And so we'll talk about in the hosting part, which comes up next, of how you deal with that. But every meeting has a uh, nine digit number. And so it doesn't matter whether it's for one person or 100 people. Okay. Okay, you'll be through. You, I, I got ahead of myself. Thank you. Yeah, Tom Ernst, you have uh, your you're on. Your microphone's on. I'm trying to turn off your microphone. Unmute. There we are. Can you hear us, Tom? His mic is not on. Now, now your mic is off. Uh, your mic is on. I'm going to point out when the gentleman uh, Mark was talking about the Chromebook. That same configuration for raising your hand is the same thing on my Windows 10 machine. I don't have my, uh, the button down at the bottom reaction only has the uh, clap hand and, uh, and uh, I guess whatever the um, thumb up. But uh, I went to the same procedure to look at the participants and then found the actual way to do the raise hand item. Yeah, because that's, that's the way we've always done it. So I don't know whether uh, somebody has a newer version of Zoom uh, or they're not on a Windows 10, but there's some difference. Because I know that... that uh, um, uh, yeah, a, th a third person, by the way, did using the, um, uh, using the um, uh, share button, I think, pointed out that she was on a window machine and that uh, her... Um, uh, reactions was within the uh, a sub menu uh, with the uh, option within the participants icon. Yeah, that was Kathleen said that. So, um, and I, it could be a Windows version. I don't know whether it's a Zoom version, but obviously there's nothing uniform, and and maybe that's Windows uh, or or what. I I don't know on why it wouldn't all be the same, but it's not. John, John, could that be the difference between 
as a host and co-host what we see and what a regular visitor would see? Well, Kathleen is, is a regular person and she sees it under the participants button, but somebody else who's not a host said it was under the uh, reaction. And when I go to the reaction, I don't see it because I am the host. Yeah, I see, I see a thumbs up and, and the hand up under reactions, but not the clapping. But I see all three under the participants. You don't see clapping under reactions? No. Ah. The, uh, I don't know if it matters, but uh, when I went into the Zoom meeting today, it installed a new version of Zoom, and I had Zoom on there before. Yeah. Oh, so, Peter, that, that, that's one thing that um, whatever type of um, instructions you have is that we always recommend that uh, you update Zoom before you start. Ah, or, okay. or, or check. Usually they'll tell you that you have an update and they'll do it, uh, but it's always best uh, ahead of time a little bit because once you've done a Zoom, it's on your machine and you don't have to download it every time, but there are updates. And so we always recommend before the meeting. We also yeah. recommend that um, you don't do what Peter did when you saw him share. He had a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of different programs running or were those all just startup icons on the bottom of your taskbar? Uh, well, they were different Word documents, so yeah. I could pull information from one and then the other. Right. Well, we, we tell people to have as, as least amount of stuff running that would interfere with your uh, computer processor and, you know, the way it works. So uh, that's just a recommendation. But yeah, updates come here and there. And um, I can't tell right now because it's not on the screen that you're looking now whether there's an update, but usually... Uh, you get it. Now, I uh, forgot to mention too that there's two ways to use Zoom. One is you download the Zoom client and in Windows, you'd find that under your alphabet Z. And when you start that up, it just starts up a little app that is a normal app and you click on it and you sign in um, or you click on it and you say join. And when you join, it asks for that nine digit number but it's pretty much just a little box that pops up and it has buttons that says, you know, with your sound and whatever, you know, there. Um, what happens is when you start that up, that just kind of bypasses your browser and it then opens up the browser so you see Zoom. If you use the uh, link that, like Peter sent you, that email will open up your browser first and then that's, told to start the Zoom program. So, so you have two, day, two ways to do that. So Peter, did you click on the link or did you open up Zoom and put the number in? I, well, I had apparently copied the link to another document and then that wouldn't, um, it wasn't hyperlinked. So I had to copy and paste that and then put that in the browser um, search bar. Yeah, so maybe, maybe that's what triggered the update automatically because of that versus starting the app separate and putting the the um, the the number in because i didn't get an update hmm. yeah okay. i didn't get one but and i think it's just a matter of how long it's been since you updated yeah, okay. you, you know how it is with windows you sit there and click and you know there's an update out there and you keep click and check for updates and said you're up to date and you know you're not so right. it, yeah Art. We uh, have uh, somebody who had chat. We have three people with their hands up, Tom, uh, then um, uh, George, and then Edwin. Um, also, uh, we have a lady who commented in a chat window. Uh, I see raise hands under participants, but thumbs up and clap under reaction. There are other re uh, reactions. Also, this is from Kathleen. Other reactions, also other participants button plus uh, more button for even more. Uh, so let's uh, let's go to Tom. You had uh, you've um, had your hand up longest. Tom Ernst, unmuting. The uh, my, when I put my hand up a long time ago, uh, I didn't take it down, and then you ended up uh, talking to me anyway. So I'm done. I'll try to take yeah. that hand down. Okay. No, Thank you. That that was Peter. Peter, who's the host, 
called on you before and didn't click the lower hand. So he's yeah. getting used to this, but that's yeah. that's what it should have happened. Yeah. George, you're next. I'm just trying to unmute you right now. There we go. All righty, got a question. You may have already covered it, but I remember there's a way, you know, like I've got uh, five across and five down. I got 25, you know, up right now. There's a way I know to get rid of the ones that aren't sharing a camera, but I can't find that setting. Where Good. is it? Do you want to answer that, Peter? Or do you want me to? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you right click on one of the ones that doesn't have a camera and it will say hide. Now, will that hide all of them or? All the ones yeah. without a camera. Very good. Okay, thank you. That's good. And now then that's what we That's in the participants list, right? Nope, nope, that's, I'm on the main screen. All you do is go to one of the blue ones and right click and down at the bottom it says hide non video people. Oh, okay. And then to bring them all back, I, I go up to that menu at the top of the screen then? That's what they've told me. Um, Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Sure. And who's next? Uh, Edwin. Uh, unmuting you now. You're unmuted. Okay. I unmuted myself to you, but Mark, uh, if you look on the participants, on uh, there's a more button to the right hand side of that. Uh, there, you know, like a little. Yeah, just a button. It should be under that if you if you haven't been reading the uh, chat stuff. But it was in the chat, and now you're just trying to stonewall me, aren't you? No. No, you're there. I no, I no. I look at his picture. Look at Mark's picture. Oh, oh Mark's yeah. picture. Yeah. I, I'm I'm going to kick him out of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> You can, it's honest Abe. I can do that to Abe if I want. Um, we'll go ahead and do it, because uh, there was a question about that. That's another feature that is not Zoom. I want to make sure everybody know that Mark is playing with something else. In Zoom, if you have a computer that has enough horsepower, you can do something better than what I'm doing. I hauled out a, a, a little screen, a little accordion screen, so you wouldn't see my junky basement office. Um, but Zoom has the ability that, that if you have a machine that has enough horsepower, you can superimpose a picture behind you. It used to take a green screen, and it can still use a green screen, uh, like they do on, on your newscasts and weather. Uh, but if you have it, you, you can pick a picture and put it behind you. What Mark is doing is, it. this is software from his camera. So it's not a Zoom thing, it's his camera that's doing that. And uh, some cameras come with that automatically, I guess some, uh, you can install a program that'll do that. But that's not a Zoom, that's, a, that's another camera thing. Yeah, I, I posted it in the, um, in the chat if, if anyone was interested. Oh, and, and, and that's a reminder. One of the nice things about the chat too is that you can post uh, or paste uh, web links so that if, if uh, you've got something that you want your group to be able to go see, you can just type it in there because it's a, it's a live with the hyperlinks to do that. And the final thing about the chat is that the host has the ability to sit or it's automatic the chat gets saved and so it becomes just a text file that can be used for review, uh, checking ca uh, questions and making sure that there weren't any that didn't get answered or some comments or whatever. So it's kind of a nice uh, other feature that, that can be done with Zoom. Any other questions about this before I give it back and figure out whenever I talk about hosting? Okay, there's a chat. See, I got a button. What you... it popped up. Sorry. Can you save the participant list? No. But you can require everybody to register at Zoom, and then you would have um, the list. Uh, that's why when when uh, you do a VTC, you go to Eventbrite to register to get the email sent. 
but each time that you come to uh, VTC and Zoom, you put your name in and your maybe your email, that gets recorded along with what time you signed in, what time you signed out, when you signed in again, when you signed out again. So for the VTC, we know if somebody is trying to fool us by signing in and then going home, we know they checked out. Anybody else? Peter, I can't remember. Does it go right from this into hosting or do you do something now? Yeah, it goes right from this into hosting. Okay. Let me, this, this is, you know, would be of, of uh, interest, not interest to some people, but uh, just to let you know, because I said, you know, everybody should go get their own free account and be able to use it. When you're the host, you get to schedule the meetings and it's a very simple process. You log into your account, say, I want to schedule a meeting. When do you want to do it? and about how long do you want. So for this meeting, I went and picked the date. I said we wanted to go 6.30 to a little after nine o'clock. And then there are some few other uh, options. We said you could have the uh, video for both the host and the participants, mics for hosts and participants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a few other things like one of the things that a host can do where I, I'm not quite sure because everybody kind of moves around said about the uh, concern about any kind of uh, controversy uh, meeting there was an article that just came out uh, a little while ago that Peter sent me that said uh, they were concerned about uh, taking over your meeting and I'm not too worried about that because if you have your regular meeting at champs uh, anybody can come off the street and I guess, do you meet in a, in a room in the back of champs? Yes. One of their meeting rooms, chumps, TJ chumps. chumps, in chumps. Uh, but uh, yes. So if somebody walks in, they could kind of try to commandeer your meeting and all sorts of problems and you need to get the bouncer, but the host, I have the ability. I can kick anybody out of the meeting I want and they can't get back in. So don't worry about what happens if somebody, you know, wants to, you know, try to take over. You can mute them and then you can kick them out of the meeting. So you, uh, you can customize the um, meeting as to when you want it. Uh, tonight, I had it set uh, for everybody had to go to a waiting room. So nobody was allowed in unless the host or co-host let them in. Uh, in future meetings, I just did that for Peter and his co-hosts to, to see how that feature worked. Um, most of the time we, we don't do it. Uh, so you set all that up and there are uh, other things that a host can do. Now, if you're somebody who's the account owner, there, there's some other kinds of um, features. Remember I told you about turning on the uh, breakout rooms and so there's a lot of things you can do. The other big thing with the, the, with the host is that once you set up a meeting, you generate an invitation and it's generated and then you can copy it and paste it into an email or paste it anywhere you want. Uh, the one that you got from Peter was one that I sent him, uh, which I modified a little bit. And then I saw that Gladdy added some more stuff uh, to it. And it basically gives you the time of the meeting and the link. And so most of the time, it's just as easy to type or click that link. So you're not trying to type in numbers wrong because, you know, all of us have done it where we have typed something and it says wrong. And you said, no, I'm typing it right. You type it four or five times and you realize, oh, I was, oh, I was typing it wrong. Uh, so you send out the invitation. Then uh, the host then when it's meeting time goes in and starts the meeting and then the host ends the meeting. Uh, anybody can leave whenever they want to. Uh, but the host can say honk honk the time's up and everybody good night and pushes one button. Uh, you can also see that you have the participants, but for the hosts and co-hosts, uh, you have managing participants. So you can do the turning on and off of their microphone, turn on and off their video, kick them out. Um, I allowed Peter to record. I could allow some other people maybe to record. I can make co-hosts and we've already decided that it's always best to make sure that you do have a co at least one co-host so that if the host 
internet kicks out like it did for me the other day, the meeting can still go on. The other thing that Peter has mentioned was that he said that it's, it's kind of when you're one person trying to do everything, you can have one co-host monitoring the chat box, you can have one co-host monitoring participants, and then you can have the host do the leadership part. And so you can do all of that. Um, Uh, while you're waiting there, yeah, I, um, John, we have uh, Bruce is, uh, has his hand up. All right. Go ahead, uh, Bruce. Uh, I'm unmuting you now. Go in a second. He did it at the same time you did. I think so. So one of you unmute, not both of you. Oh, I think he doesn't want to talk, Bruce. Oh, he wants to talk in just a second. Okay, you're unmuted, Bruce. You can talk now. I wondered if there was uh, rooms that were open all the time that people could go to just to talk to, like uh, Yahoo Messenger used to be, a place to meet with people. You do it by setting up a, a meeting time. And if you want to, you can set up a meeting time that lasts 12 hours. Okay, and then you could do that like every day of the week? Probably could. Okay. Yeah, you just have to set up a meeting for every day of the week at a certain time, and then you just have to broadcast. Uh, broadcast. Now, um, I we all recommend for your security type purposes that you generate a new uh, meeting ID each time each account so when peter goes in and starts looking at, at the at the dma account there is a number that's assigned to dma that if you have a reoccurring meeting you can use it as your personal id but our recommendation is don't use that because if it's the one that anybody can use and they get it once they've got it forever and then you'd have to keep kicking that person out uh, but you could uh, so that like if you wanted to do a, um, a daily help session, you could use the same ID number, uh, but then it's, not, it's kind of like pretty much public and you can't control who comes in. Okay, but, yeah, the Yahoo Messenger used to be an application that you could use, uh, but they finally had to do away with it because people were abusing it like. Right. Uh, block throwing people out and stuff but for a while it was fun thing to visit and talk right. to people. i i think what would happen is zoom probably would say if you're you know if if you've paid for it you know you you've got it but i'm guessing that they are mon would monitor not what's going on but just the uh, start and stop time and uh it might become a problem if you left it on all the time. I've never tried, uh, you know, a meeting to see whether it can go more than 24 or 23 hours and 59 minutes. Uh, but, you know, if you're paying for it. Okay, it was just a question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, it, oh, one of the things that we didn't do um, is that when you share, if, you know, when Peter shared his, screen there was an option that peter could let mark take over his screen and so he could be working the computer uh, because maybe peter said i don't know how to do this can you show me so he tr transfers his his screen controls over to somebody else and then they can say oh here you go here here it's a lot like what i do with uh with team viewer when i'm working with somebody with computer problems, I watch their screen, and then when they need help, I can take it over without them having to click any buttons. So there's an extra feature with the sharing. That's Anything nice. else on hosting or sharing? Is that's I, that the uh, agenda says this is it for me. Well, the uh, one other thing that I had a uh, uh, Dave has a clock. Um, in the participants list, it looks like a clock to the left of his microphone. 
I was just about to say something about that. Uh, the clock means I need to take a time out. And you'll find it under the uh, three little dots, the more button on the, uh, at least on my computer, it's at the far right of the participants uh, submenu. Uh, you'll see a cup of coffee icon, which means need a break. And then right next to that uh, is a little clock, which means away, away from the uh, screen. And in fact, I noticed Gladdy had to get up and leave for just a moment uh, about three minutes ago. And what she should have done was clicked on the clock just to indicate that she would be away at that point. I'm sorry to use you as an example, Gladdy, but I just happened to notice you taking off. By the way, to turn off the clock, you have to go back down to more and click on the clock again. Again, yeah. Yeah, yeah to turn off the clock, indicating that you're, you're back. And uh, even though the clock is on, uh, the video is still showing. Uh, at least it was for me. I think it froze up for a little bit while it was on. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of freezing up, one of the other things that we've discovered too is that um, if you are on Wi-Fi, that you are at the mercy of your Wi-Fi strength and, and um, connection. That sometimes uh, we've heard people who on Wi-Fi, their microphone, their speaking goes, hesitates and, and garbles out. Uh, and sometimes they're uh, actual picture will freeze up. Uh, so we recommend that if you are the presenter that you be wired so that you've got your best strongest connection. But sometimes it's not possible. But just understand that that uh, how how strong your uh, router might be, uh, you know, could uh, could affect your the quality of your zoom. But we haven't really had the problems, uh, very, very uh, limited. And the, uh, I'll, I'll mention that the, those icons that are the little options at the bottom of the participants, uh, that's, that's recently new for me. And I, you know, I've been using the Zoom for a number of years. So they're always making changes, improvements, and, and uh, adding on to it. Looks like the, those are voting buttons. Correct. Uh, and uh, go slow, go faster. Uh, would those be prompts to the speaker? My guess, yes. Okay. And I there, don't know what. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. There's there's a button. I don't know if everybody has it or just you and Mark with the host that says polls. And when I click on that, I can make a poll. Oops, that just kicked me out. There we go. Oh, okay. So you can make a question and with a single answer or multiple choice, and then post that for your um, um, group to to see. Where do you find that? Uh, it, it, in between, for me, it's in between participants and and uh, screen share. Oh, I got nothing in between those two. Okay, so it must be just the host, just the host okay. that can do that. Or there's a setting that says allow co-hosts to, to do polls. But that's not probably something a co-host would do. So, you, you know, you can have uh, questions set up so that people can answer them in the group without having to verbally or raise their hand that everybody can see if they don't turn it off. Okay. Can, can people other than uh, co-hosts uh, co see the participants? Yeah, everybody can see participants. Everybody can. Okay. By the way, I'm under the, about the participant list is what I'm talking about. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry about. Sorry for the interruption. No. Nope. Well, Go ahead. Uh, under Mark. the participant uh, list, I noticed that there is a yes. There are yes and no buttons, and that presumably is when you want to uh, conduct a poll. Uh, if it's something that involves a yes or no answer, you can click on the ch the check the green check for yes or the red uh, X for no. And what's nice is when you do that, there's a visual number that tells you how many did and how many did. You don't have okay. to go down through your list. So right now, one person had said yes, but they changed their vote to no. So yeah, um, all new features. And again, uh, this is primarily for business use, but we can 
apply it to whoever we want to for our groups. And as you can see, this, this may be what saves groups uh, the advisors and the board of directors for APCG were discussing the fact that we're getting reports that many groups are losing their meeting places because either it's it's a place that uh, is is raising their rent or they go to the library and the library uses it at the wrong time. I know that the the group from um, up near Chicago has a problem because they're not uh, they have a regular scheduled meeting but they only open up the scheduling for so far ahead and if they're not in there right away to grab their usual time three months from now somebody else will take it and then they have to move so mm -hmm. you know a, a zoom presence uh, allows you to be have a permanent room without having a permanent room okay cool and you can see that Chris, Christina went and did her background. Cause yeah. I, don't I don't think she's sitting out at the, at the uh, front of the bridge there. No, she's not near the Golden Gate. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's what it looks like anyway. Is that what that is, Chris? Yeah, she's, she nods. Okay. Uh, any other uh, comments, uh, any other questions about hosting? John, I, I noticed on the news or one of the night shows uh, or the morning shows, they had what appeared to be Zoom, but there were no names or microphone uh, icons in the lower left. Hmm. I also noticed that, and it was a choir, they were all singing. So I don't know if it was something that was they all did it, they all recorded it, and then someone put it all together. I have seen that that happen. Um, I'm not quite sure. The only thing that you can do is rename. Uh, and you can see that, that you know, a, a blank box comes up like for Lori because she doesn't have her camera on uh, or a standard picture for Tom. I'm not quite sure unless you can let me just try something here i hit my wrist um, and i hit yeah i can't even er erase my name from here i can change my name and I did because our, our account has just, you know, the APCUG too. Uh, but I'm sure there are, there are a few other, uh, other um, apps out there because I, I, we had an article that Judy sent out to everybody that said these different companies were going to be providing conference or collaboration programs during the, the duration of, of the, the virus uh, for free for groups to use. And maybe some other groups have, um, or other programs don't have to have a, a name. But I think for Zoom, some kind of a name has to be there to be able to distinguish who you are. Well, the, um, um, I, don't, I don't remember you mentioning that we could change those names. I know, yeah. I know we can change those names. I can change those names. You can, but uh, can the, uh, yes. just the host and the co-host change the name? No, you just right click on your picture and you should have a menu that says, change my name. And that's for everybody. Should be. Okay. Somebody can go and check and confirm that by changing their name to something silly or whatever. Um, if you if you tell your computer when you first log in and check the box that says remember this, then you don't get asked for a name change again. Ah, okay. But if you come into here and change your name, the box is again there saying, do you want this? So I, I left the box unchecked so that uh, my name wouldn't show up because tomorrow this is going to be used by uh, under the hood computer group in California. So I didn't want my name to be the one that's remembered. Got it. Got it. And that would be the host. The ho in that case, the it would be the host would always... Uh... If you had set it up to remember your name 
as host today, then that means the next host in California would have that same name? Yeah, because the account has that name. Your, each, of this, each of these names are associated with your account if you have one Got it. for the next time you open up Zoom. Okay. So you could have, you know, your account probably, I don't know what you set up your uh, DMA account to say as the person, and that will be the default name. So our, our person is APCG2. Right. And then we can change the name each time we uh, do a meeting. Okay. Hmm. Any, uh, any other questions about hosting? Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, and I've already started compiling a, um, a list of really good links um, for further instruction. Um, I mean, this is a great start, but for uh, in case you want to go any deeper into the use of Zoom, I've, uh, I'm going to be posting some links uh, and sending them to Mark so he can put them on a page linked from the homepage. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have that up for another another month so people can practice uh, the video as I mentioned before Mark's going to edit the video and uh, it'll be on our YouTube channel and he'll um, and maybe on the website too Does that sound right Mark Wow yeah we'll we'll have to look at see what our options are based on our current free version of YouTube and, and so forth. So it, it may take a week or two to, to figure all that out. Well, the, at the next DMA board uh, meeting, I think we're going to talk about um, um, expanding the uh, YouTube um, space. Yeah, um, even though it, it, may, it may change. I mean, we really have to look at what the options with YouTube, from what I've talked to other people, there are some limitations, not even, you know, even if you have a paid version. Well, I was just thinking space, but but uh, that seems to be our, lim our only limitation right now is space. Space on YouTube. Um, I noticed that you posted uh, uh, one of your videos there to help as a, you know, uh, and that's helpful, most helpful. Appreciate that. Anybody else have any? Oh, there we go. Mike, Mike S. Um, unmuting you. You have your hand up. Okay. You're the, on. Uh, on your screen, I see 25 people when you got in the grid pattern. But if you go to the middle of either side, and there's more, there'll be an arrow pop up. You can move over to see more picture, more people who are sharing their camera or on the connection. Yeah, so uh, so this way you'll be able to see uh, all, we got 30 percent for the 30 participants now. Yeah. The other thing you can do, there's a setting that you can hide anybody that doesn't have a camera. And that way you only see the people you can see. And sometimes let's say, for example, if there's five people who are um, not having their camera, if I would do that, then I have two people on, screen one for me and everybody's screen will be a different order. Um, I have two people that are, are uh, uh, not using video. So if I would say hide all the video people, then there might be a couple more people from page two to get on. And I don't have to be going back and forth because the ones on the end are, I couldn't see them anyway. But yeah, that's, that's the problem that, that when you get more than 25, but that's good, you know. Peter would love to have more than 25. I was hoping for 98. Yeah. Um, but that's why sometimes people just say, uh, I, I'll go to speaker view because all I'm concerned about is being able to see who's talking. I don't really care about who's not talking. I can go across the film strip at the top, but then I get to see the, the, the main person talking. Now the um, the pictures. Uh, Mark was the first person in, and I was uh, an early person in too. Um, are uh, do the boxes show up in order of who came into the meeting? Not necessarily, because you're first in mine, and I'm second. But I'm the first one because really, I opened the meeting, but I took a longer time trying to get my camera. So you got in ahead of me, but I'm ahead of Mark. But you said Mark's first for you. 
Yeah, Mark is first for me. Is there any yeah. way to move around those boxes? Nope. Not that right. I know of. Okay. And it's and you'll see that when somebody leaves, they all move to take the space that's that's uh, um, gone. And if somebody comes back in, well, they go to the end of the line somewhere. Hmm. I would like it to be, and I'd have to check the settings that would say, you know, people who are not using their camera go to the end of the line, nothing against you, but I don't want them gone, even though I'll still know if they have a question because they hit the, the hands up or they hit the uh, chat box and I'll see those, but just to kind of move the people around that way. But yeah, where uh, is that? Where is that link again uh, that ca that causes everybody who doesn't have a video to go to the end of the line? That's what I would like. The only link that we have is to hide the non-participating ones, and when you hide them, you don't see them anymore at all. Ah, okay, all right. I, George, I you're where, on. I forgot where that's located. To do that, you just right-click on somebody who's a, a no-camera person. And then you have the option to hide non-video participants. I'm uh, trying to bring George in right now. Let me see if it's easier to do here. George, I'm trying to unmute you. There we go. You're unmuted now, George. Okay, as the host, are you guys able to see when somebody pops in, I know I hear the ding, but I mean, do you have a listing that, that shows, okay, hey, okay, yeah, I see where Sally joined in, and, and hey, Jerry's on now, and you know, this kind of thing, or is it just the list? It's just the list, but they would be added to the bottom of the list, and then, okay. then it, 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 it's, it's, um, The ding is what you do so you know somebody came in, then you can look for them. Um, but the they list, let me get back, I gotta get, when you're, in, when you're in a single screen and you got both the participants and the chat up, they share the same area. Usually right. when I'm running a host, I have, the, uh, I have a second monitor and I move the uh, chat and the participants to my second monitor so I have the zoom full on the one and the other. Um, so I have to get rid of the chat. Uh, in terms of the, the participants, the host is always at the top and the co-hosts are always next. And then sometimes it's, it'll be right now, George is next in line because George has a mic on, everybody else doesn't. And they are in alphabetical order on the participants after that. So, you know, it doesn't always stay because once George has his mic turned off, he will move back down to the proper alphabetical order. But the, the list is in alphabetical order. And oh, I, I think see that now. Yeah. yeah. And so, what happens is that I think the, the new person comes in and then moves up into that spot. But you can tell a new person's coming in. Uh, you hear the ding, and you'll see their uh, their square, and it will say they're connecting. So you know it's a new person. Okay. But the ding is what you can turn on or off. You can also do it, I think, where only the host hears the ding. But I didn't do that because you're all hearing the ding. Hmm. Thank you. Yep. So, so, John, um, before we end Somebody the just meeting, just left. So, I John, heard, be, before yeah. we before we end the meeting, I, I'd like to thank you and and your organization for for helping us through this uh, process and getting this started for our group. We appreciate it. We've got you know my group may do it in April. We're trying to find out whether the presentation will work over the internet. Um, Kant and Akron is going to be using it. So you'll be, you're the first to use it. Kant, Kant and Akron is going to do it. And so we're starting to pick up some groups uh, to do that. And uh, I think it's good to be able to 
keep a group together during this time. Because even though Peter said, well, we might be able to do April, and everybody else would probably say, well, the governor said there's no school going to be through May 1st. And uh, if there's not going to be any schools, there's probably not going to be any restaurants and there's probably not going to be any large groups for the month of April. So uh, it's probably right. best that you plan that the April meeting be a Zoom meeting too. Uh, is your organization meetings open? That's the, the interesting thing is that our organization is 10 people. The officers, there is no actual group because we're just the, uh, what holds all the groups together. Uh, we, the APCUG is just the, like the governing body that uh, communicates to local groups and sends out things, provides the speakers bureau, which is what I'm technically saying is, to, is tonight, provides all the VTCs, provides the video that's up there, uh, sends sends all of the newsletter items to your editor um runs the contests and it their group the group, group used to be bigger but that's why i'm doing two regions because we don't have enough advisors um and it's just it's just a governing body so we we don't we had to have a big fight with the with the uh uh the feds because our our treasurer lives in one spot and they they kind of want your treasury to have a real mailbox, but we don't want the stuff to go to the treasurer uh, because the treasurer could move around and change his banks and stuff. So uh, yeah, we're there. There are ten, twelve of us, I think. That's really what's APCUG. Okay. But so, you are APCUG. You're so, you're a member. So what I see on your YouTube channel. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of videos out there. Those videos are probably screen capture videos from someone's computer that's going over some type of content. Those are all done, uh, the 98% of them are all VTC that we do three times, four times a year over Zoom. So that's a re Zoom recording for somebody doing a presentation to a group of people. Oh, okay. Yeah, so those are live, live, most of them are, are live recordings that have, might have to be edited to change out some stuff, but it's, it's APC uses a Zoom and we produce those hundred and some uh, videos from something like this, exactly what Peter's got. He's going to save this video and he can post it up. The difference is that on a VTC, there's no cameras running, just the presenter's screen. Right, right. But, it, but, it's, but it's, uh, you're presenting that to other groups using Zoom, though, and you're saving that recording to present on your YouTube. Well, here's exactly what we do. Every three months, and so we did it in February, so the first Saturday in May will be our next VTC. And anybody who wants to attend can go to, there's an email that should come out, and it'll tell you to go to a, a website called Eventbrite and you sign up. And then we will send you the links to the VTCs and you just join a Zoom like you did tonight. And if you're on track two, you'll see, hear me. You won't see me, you'll hear me. If you're on track one, you'll hear David Williams, who's the other okay. Zoom one. And so it's, it's open to any member of a APCUG club. And all of you are members of DMA, and DMA is a member of APCG. So we would love to overfill our VTC rooms, but you know we have the same hundred limit. Yeah, so, how's so, that yeah. communication going out through a newsletter that goes out to to um, a DMA? That's correct, and we also have uh, a, 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 an email list of anybody that's ever attended a Zoom gets it themselves. But okay. we, you know, Judy sends it. I usually send another one through to the to DMA from me, and then you can, you know, then you can spread it around to the rest of the DMA, DMA members. Because technically, I'm not allowed to speak to you individually. I can speak to the office. I'm the communication between the club and APCG, but technically, 
you can't talk to APCG. You talk through me and I'm, I'm APCG. I'm, I'm like the wizard behind the curtain. Yeah. So, um, so you're using Eventbrite. Is that only to get a invitation and, and there's no cost? I can't say for sure on that. Um, it's what we used to do years ago. They've been using Eventbrite before we started using Zoom. We used to use something else. Uh, I can't even think of the name now for presentation. I think it was, it might've been an Adobe product. We use Eventbrite to register you for Zoom. And right. then we take those registrations, put it in our email and send you the information. You have the ability in um, Zoom if Peter wants to, he can click a little link, a little button, and if somebody wants to come to uh, attend your meeting, they register, and then you get a list of who to send out the invitations to automatically. Okay. Well, thanks again for. Oh, my pleasure. Roasting this. We have a hand up, uh, two hands up. Uh, I think Mike was first. Mike Stock. Yep. The, uh, uh, okay, go ahead. There are multiple, you know, video collaboration services out there. And like you talked about, John, the first one, what well, IBM had one a while back and then Adobe Acrobat Connect was another one that I had used for a while and it went off the government contract, but it's available and they're still using it. And it's a lot of people are getting the features from that probably go to meetings out there also and a lot of people use that one, but there's other ones too, and there's there's a lot of them. So. I find this one uh, very stable. Yeah, and, this is um, really good. Um, yeah, how did what do you uh, what, how would you compare this to others, Mike? This is pretty good. Um, the Air Force went with a public, well, the DoD went with a public domain one. Uh, they're calling Acrobat Connect. No, it's. Um, Defense Connect services and it's um, like a open shareware software people can use and they've enhanced that. It's rather spotty it seems of working over the DoD network, but it uh, it works. And I've seen lots of other um, speakers that do things. They use other services too, and there's lots of them out there. It seems like, yeah. but this is a very good one. Yeah. The uh, I mean, Mark, you had that. APCUG, I know, had a, there was a club meeting in San Antonio I used to belong to that they were a member of, the, of APCO too and APCUG and, and so there's other groups in different areas that may still be around that are having their meetings, I think. And Edwin, you're, uh, you're up next. Your hand was up. Okay, I, I I don't know if people want me to do this or not, but I thought I would like to try if you don't mind me trying to share something here. Um, Gladdy, I may want you to come online here to, you can tell us what you think of this. Uh, I'm going to try a share. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, if you can, as long as it's appropriate. Okay. You can't. He forgot that I said I set the meeting up to only allow me. Oh, okay. Okay. However, I, 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 this. it says, okay, host disabled precipitate. Now precipitate. I've undone it. So now you can. Okay. So let me try it again. Okay. Here we go. I will see if I can. I've got the screen. Oh, here we go. This is the screen that I want to share. So that actually comes up. That's good. And then I'm going to share this. And we see it. And you see it, and you can see that now. What you can do is, I put all the Gladdy. I thought I'd uh, show you this. I put in all the names of the thing of, of people in the meeting at the beginning, and so when if you want to try and do, uh, you know, who gets the prizes at the end of the thing, we can still do that. We're probably going to figure out a way to get this to people, so I don't know how to do that yet, but. What you do is you hit shuffle a couple of times, and then you hit uh, the button here, and it it does the whole thing. So now whoever wins it, you're actually going by the name. And okay. so the admin got it. Okay, we didn't we didn't see. <laughs> now all you have to do at that point is and this is what's nice about this is now you would just say remove this person so that they will not get it again because sometimes 
uh, even though you're doing it's a random generator, you can get the same person again. So now once you've got this person, you hit the remove and uh, probably shuffle it a couple more times and then hit the button again so you can do two to four tries. Now, do you see it spinning in, in so, real time? Can yeah, you see this is, if you're seeing it, uh, say Mike won that time. Well, we, so, yeah, we, I'm we seeing it, you guys Okay, well, because um, the, there's, there's some kind of a delay through the, through the uh, internet because we can see you do the shuffle, and then when you hit the white thing, it hardly moves at all, and then all of a sudden it says there's a winner. So okay. we aren't seeing it go around like the Wheel of Fortune. I, I actually do see it going around as a Wheel of Fortune. Okay, and, so we, uh, we, this, we trust you then. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's not something I'm just going, yes, this is working, but it, it's like if you're not seeing that's why I wanted to share this, see if you're all seeing it or not. Uh, but we could, uh, if, you know, whoever is going to run the, you know, generator at the end of the thing has the ability to share it and s somehow sets it up, I'd say either Gladdy, myself, or somebody else, like Mark, can set it up and, and then run it as a co-host. It may run better if a co-host does it. And I'm on a wireless, so it may not work as well. That's probably why it wasn't spinning, but it did for you. So that's the important part. Um, right. I, w I will uh, just go ahead and say that that you saw that the feature that the that the uh, account set up can be only the host, and then I can allow other people to do it. Co-hosts could, because you saw that that uh, you know Peter Peter did, but Peter anybody's a co-host can can share, but participants couldn't. And right. that was kind of to, to prevent anybody from taking over. But again, as the host, I have a button that says, stop that person sharing. So if somebody did take it over, you know, the host can immediately stop them from sharing. So uh, another good feature that, that helps you out. Um, if, if, you, if, you, if you trust everybody, because it's it's not one that's that's uh, nice enough where you can say allow this person and this person to share. So, I would guess that if you had a a a a, a, a team that was like your Zoom team, they could all be co-hosts, one host, a couple co-hosts, and they would be able to share. And then you just to have somebody else share, you have to take the risk of of letting it open up for everybody and anybody then hitting that button and trying to share. One one thing we didn't talk about. One thing we didn't talk about was the the lighting, you know, at your location. And uh, I've switched on a lighting that's actually above and behind me versus one that's in front of me, and not one behind me. So what's in having a light in front of you helps you more than having one behind you. Yeah, well, almost worse behind you. And the other thing- you know, one, in one thing you will find out if you're really trying to do some good lighting is to have some lights that are painted, are lined at the ceiling and possibly further away from you. So you're getting it from different directions. You'll get better lighting. Um, I used to do a, be a lighting designer. I've done a lot of lighting for films, TV, and that kind of thing. So it's like, I just generally, one nice thing, if you actually aim a light, if you have just a single light directional and you aim it at the ceiling, it will take the whiteness of the ceiling and reflect it back down on you. And so it's not as direct and as hard. Then you, you know, get a softer light. You can see things better. Um, it actually is, is helpful along this line. I don't have a lot of lights on, but I have just one above my head. And you can see I'm, you can see me fairly good, although when I tried to put the, you know, one thing on, it it, it was going out, so I couldn't do that, uh, what do they call it, the uh, virtual background very well. Bruce, yeah. you, had a, you had a thumbs up, was that a thumbs up, or were you asking a question? Bruce, too. So 
No, I did that a long time ago, I think. Okay. Uh, for when he said that, thanks for giving a nice presentation. Oh, oh well, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Appreciate Bruce. That. Yeah. The other thing, too, uh, in ethical part is uh, courtesy is to tell people that if you have a, a phone, you know, in your room where you are, that either turn the ringer off so that it doesn't blare in everybody's ears if you have your speaker or your microphone on. Uh, and the other thing would be to make sure that somebody else in the household knows what you're doing. Because uh, the other day when we were doing our Linux group, one of them was doing it over his um, smartphone or his iPad, whichever, or iPhone. And uh, his wife didn't know he was in live. She just thought he was watching something. So she's coming through the room behind him and saying things to him about something that he's not doing right or something, this and that or whatever. And uh, he finally had to say, oh, no, I'm live. They can hear what you're saying. Yeah. So uh, make sure that somebody knows that uh, uh, this is a two-way communication thing. Hey, you still in that meeting? Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you talking to that crazy Peter or what? <laughs> um, I want to comment to Gladdy and say that we're going to do that. And uh, she asked about whether or not there would be an opportunity to have a Region 3 officer Zoom meeting. And that's not something that we had really kind of thought about before. Um, but I think it's something worth trying. Uh, this last week, uh, we have two members from the different two groups started a, because we, from the idea of the fact that you guys are starting to use a Zoom and have meetings, uh, and we have our VTCs, but they came up with the idea of about maybe uh, having a Chromebook meeting once a month. I think it's just once a month. And uh, so the two of them said, yes, we'll get together. And they sent out notice somewhere. Um, I don't know how they decided who, but because I don't think I got it. And they had a meeting last week with almost 100 people. Actually, there was 100 people because Judy said that she had to wait until somebody left before she could get into the meeting. So Peter, that asks another question. If somebody leaves, the next person, I guess, in line can get in. And uh, so they're, they're, they're decide they're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, we have one of our uh, advisors who's uh, president of a group in Oklahoma, at Oklahoma City. And I think he's doing a weekly uh, Zoom thing for, oh, he's going to be doing it uh, for the Insider program. So anybody who's on Windows 10 Insider, he's going to have a session every week for people to talk about what they know about the Insider stuff. And we're talking about maybe having a, uh, for the GT might be interested that we might do a uh, Linux once a month across the country and just have a, some kind of a meeting because with Zoom we can. But yeah, Gladdy, I think I'll, I'll put stuff together and send out and uh, invite all the D region three at one time and my region six at a different time. And people can just get together and talk about things and bring up things and share things. I think that'll be great. Thank, Thank you, you for too. suggesting that. Yeah, that sounds real good too. Yeah, and the, the key thing then will be yeah. is that is is that we have to make sure that APCUG has uh, correct, up-to-date officer I, emails. I, I'm still and that the emails addresses will be uh, working. Because we sometimes, I get a lot when I email out that gets kicked back because they think it's spam, which I'm sending it out to, you know, a hundred and some officers in the region. Um, but we do also have problems when people are redirecting mail and their mailbox gets full. And so no more mail comes in to be forwarded to their home address if that's what they're doing. So sometimes um, it's best that for officer communication, uh, like I know that I've got Gladys and we've communicated directly because sometimes if I do a DMA, it doesn't go anywhere. I get a kickback that says, you know, it's full or, you know, some kind of a problem that it comes back. But I've, you know, for DMA, I've got Gladys address so I can email her direct and get something to her. 
So yeah, so uh, as long as we uh, have up to date emails, then you'll get the information about the VTCs. Your editor will get all of the uh, news articles that we send out that you can add to your news uh, letters um, and all that communication. And um, we're just about ready to wrap this up. Uh, this has been a terrific presentation. Thank you. Uh, Chester, wait a minute. Do you have a question? Wait I'm a minute. Let me unmute you. Good idea. How about keeping track of the phone numbers? That's an old way of doing it, but if the email doesn't go through, have a list of the phone numbers. Right. And the problem with that is a lot of people don't want to give up their phone numbers out to us. It was a thought. Yeah, it's a good thought because that, you know, that's the thing we do. If we cannot get in touch with somebody, you know, through email, then we have to try to do a good old uh, internet white paper search and see if we can find an, a phone number or contact somebody who can put us in contact. Yeah, back when Robert T. Morris unleashed the internet worm, no one could contact anyone because all they had was email addresses and no phone numbers. Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot of mine, I have both. <laughs> yeah. So the, And because, you know, just for uh, personal, I use TeamViewer to help people with their computer problems because it works great. But I use Skype to call them. And that way, if their internet goes down because they've hit a button or something wrong, I can still be talking to them because I call their house phone. And then I don't lose that connection. So, yeah, phone uh, phone numbers and emails are both important. When I was doing tech support for a guy one day, Oof. he had to reboot his router. He had VoIP phone, so I lost him that way too. Yeah. Yep, that'll do it. And so much of us, so many of us now use that with with the cell phones and the, uh, you know, whether you're Spectrum or whatever, and use their VoIP. So yeah. Um, Oh, I was talking to Judy, and and the Judy, if you don't know, she's the the uh, chair of the, of the advisor. She's she lives out in California, and she has all that region. And we were t communicating, and she was having a problem with her uh, Spectrum uh, internet because it dropped from 200 download to 50. And so the guy was out there working on it, and we were talking. All of a sudden, her phone went out because he had shut down the router, <laughs> and so she couldn't call me back because well. We could have called back on this, the cell phone, but yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I, um, we've, uh, we've been at this. It, it went fast. We've been at this for two hours now. And um, we have, um, um, normally we would uh, remind people about the um, uh, brain trust uh, solutions. Uh, does anybody have any brain trust solutions that they didn't think about when I first brought it up? And they might have it now. Any solutions on any other products? Anything other than Zoom? Okay, Gladdy. You're unmuted. Okay. Well, it's not exactly technology, but <clears throat> if you, to get through the coronavirus, uh, there's a website called hashtag uplift today and it has to do with a lot of what people are doing to cope with uh, the quarantine and it's got some interesting little articles and videos on it so it's hashtag uplift today it'll take you to a twitter site thank you gladi had sent me um a um video a video, yeah, it was a David Pogue video. It was on CBS Sunday Morning, I believe. Yeah, but it's worth seeing again. It's, it's seven only minutes. It's only okay. seven minutes. Yeah, seven minutes long. Uh, I can uh, uh, open it up and run the share. Um, and um, if uh, you don't wish to see it, you can drop out. But let me first say um, that uh, if you like what DMA is doing, please become a member or donate. And thank you, Dara people, for uh, participating and for coming in and asking questions and, and listening. Uh, we'll be happy to work with you in any way that we can. Um, so, but thank you for being here. And most importantly, be healthy, stay well, 
Keep an open mind and be good. We hope to see you all again next month. And this concludes the March D, uh, 2020 DMA general meeting. I'm going to go ahead and share this video that uh, Gladie had sent me. And, um, and then just uh, that'll be the end of, um, at the end of our meeting. Mike, Mike did have a question in chat, Peter. Oh, OK. Let's get that real quick. Outlook 365 font size can be changed, question, question. Anybody know the answer to that? Can yeah. Outlook 365? Yeah, well, in the email message, yeah. Yeah, it can. It can, just like Word. You highlight, you can highlight it and um, highlight your whole thing. You can either highlight it by clicking and dragging over it, or you can um, um, put your... Uh, icon or put your flashing cursor to one side or the other or whatever you want to make larger and uh, um, not, not in the message not in the message not right. in the message in the message there's a there's a, a top level showing you all the all the messages and stuff i mean it comes up really big font i don't know how to change the size to smaller because the desktop version is a lot smaller and i can see messages and select which ones i want to watch when you go into the what the web mail I only see about five, six or seven lines and I can't see and they're all big, big font and you can't select and see what's in the mailbox there's a there's a, a thing where you can uh, either on the bottom or on the top where you're zooming the whole thing if you look on the the outside of your outlook 365 it's got a it should have a a a point on the bottom of the whole thing that where you can change the the size that it, it's really very easy in 365. Well, I've got a different I'm using the regular mail and that's got like a, a little icon on the right hand side which does it a little easier. But. Yeah if you're just doing one application it might work the um, I mean the Air Force has gone to web has moved the servers up to, to the cloud and so we've got the desktop version of Office 2016, but then sometimes if you go into webmail, it goes to the Office 365, you know, app version and it looks totally different. And it's, so it's, I'm not sure which one I'm in or how I'm in it, <laughs> but it looks like it's Office 365, Outlook 365, and I can't tell how to change the, you know, the messaging and how many messages are showing. Jack, you have your hand up? Thanks. Peter, yeah, you, um, you, you dropped down three lines and went over four people from me. On Office 365, if you're using the web browser, did you try Control Minus? Is, the whole, is everything just looking large? It's not a web browser. Um, well, Office 365 web mails through a browser. Well, I, I think he was talking about Inside Outlook and not web mail. Correct. Yeah, Outlook has got a, a slider on the bottom right. Right. It might. I'll look. Thank you. For those that uh, I forgot from the very beginning, the last step in the intro is that if you want to leave the meeting, down at the bottom right hand corner is a button that says leave the meeting. The host can kick everybody out when they host is done, but if you leave, that's the way you want to. Um, except we did find out the other day that somebody said they couldn't figure out how to, to um, leave from their smartphone so we can just kick you out. So, uh, Peter, if you want to run that video, we can leave the, you know, the Zoom going for a few minutes or we'll just say goodnight and everybody have a great time and you'll can, we'll, we'll, we'll talk and you'll set up your own next time meeting and I'll be available for any kind of questions. Thank you, John. It's been a great meeting. I appreciate it. Most helpful. Good. So uh, I see some people applauding uh, on camera. So uh, and thumbs up and, and good. It was, it was good, John. All right. And I then I'll be able to use you to uh, say communicate with uh, Peter and his DMA group about using Zoom and uh, because we want to get more people doing it.